Hi Anna, my name's Colin. I'm a retired accountant, age 70 from Stoke on Trent. I'm going to be reading from some notes because my memory isn't uh, as good as it used to be. Whilst I'm fearful for my own and my wife's future, it's primarily for those of my children and grandchild that I wish to do whatever I can to spread the word, exposing the lives peddled and the censorship carried out by the UK and foreign governments, the NHS bureaucrats and some of its frontline employees. General medical practitioners in particular, mainstream media and the likes of Facebook, Google and YouTube. Alternative opinions will not be heard or tolerated by these groups, leading us into a totalitarian or technocratic country. I and my family have numerous reasons to be grateful to the NHS surgeons over the years having heart problems in the genes, but this is no longer the NHS have paid into all my working life. Others have mentioned the wrongs that have been done, so I'm not going to repeat them here, other than to say, why haven't more NHS staff exposed the way it's been run these last few months? Now appalled down at the behaviour of most of the general medical practitioners who throughout this period put their own health and income first at the expense of their patients' well-being. We now truly see they no longer <coughs> regard themselves as holding a vacation, nor do they adhere to their oath or code of ethics, upholding their public commitment to the professional responsibilities they've assumed, including their oath to be honest, respectful and compassionate. They should be ashamed of themselves and their profession. I've not really been interested in the political scene until the advent of Brexit, when I realised just how far the opposition would go to smearing their campaign and still wouldn't recognise and accept that the majority of the votes cast were in favour of the UK leaving the EU and all its institutions. I've been amazed at the pace of <coughs> that our freedoms of movement and speech have been declining since Boris Johnson took office and at the draconian measures that have been put in place and the number of times the goalposts have been shifted. He was only elected on borrowed votes from the people of the North, which fact he acknowledged, but is soon forgotten. He and his henchman Hancock, together with the rest of his cabinet, some of which I initially thought had integrity, but now find <coughs> are following him and his discredited scientists and policies blindly. They haven't got the guts to admit that their errors <coughs> have been made handling the scandemic nor to change their stance. They need to be removed from office before it's too late and the plan for the future of the human race is fulfilled. At present, and without violence, I see no way to get rid of them as votes of no confidence by Parliament or by power of recall on each one, allowing voters to force the by-election where an MP is found to be engaged in serious wrongdoing are both non-starters. We'll have to wait until May 20. 24th next general election, by which time <clears throat> I fear the plans will be all but complete. Even then, what's the alternative party to vote for? We need another Brexit party to come to the fore, but we know how long it took to get Mr Farage's parties to yield results, so I hold little hope there. Nigel's still in the fray only this week trying once again to expose the illegals entering the country, being aided and abetted by the French and UK governments, their housing of 48,000 illegal immigrants, presumably trying to claim asylum, many without passports, so purposely making it difficult to identify their origin. Some in four-star spa hotels costing the taxpayer over £4 billion during the next 10 years. When I was researching during the latter throes of the Brexit campaign, I came across one of the UK's greatest so-called conspiracy theorists, Mr David Icke, who had been trying, mainly in vain because of ridicule and of late censorship by the mainstream media and major online players for his views held consistently over many years to expose the corruptions going on in this world by the 1% elite. Yes, I'm sceptical about some of his world beliefs, but no one can be all right all in all their views. That shouldn't mean they're wrong in all respects, and so should be ignored. He's articulate, fully committed, backs up what he says by divulging his sources, and proven to have been telling the truth over many of his claims so far. He's had explosive interviews with the online channel London Real, and I would recommend anyone 
and all who haven't seen and viewed them to seek out and watch. Other channels to subscribe to for honest and in my view truthful exposures include UK Column News, Dr Vernon Coleman, Jeff Taylor, Carl Vernon for a little humour, and Katie Hopkins for her brave and hard hitting views, Peter Hitchens, A.M. Waters, the leader of the political party for Britain. Then there's Candice Owens, Peggy Hall, Amazing Polly and Tony Heller, all in America. There are a great number of others to seek out where you'll find comfort that you're not alone in your thoughts. There are many more of us becoming enlightened by the day and that at least gives us hope. We need to share articles and videos with as many unbelievers as possible. We also need someone of Churchillian stance or a group ready to put the hard work in to bring us all together and organise large protests, not only in London, but at venues all over the country to stand against these oppressors. Could keep Britain free be that source? Thank you.